Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. You might have remembered a short while ago, we took possession of what we thought, or what we was expecting, to be a Scolopendra giant white leg. Well, what in actual fact came was a Scolopendra Galapa, Galapa, Galapagonensis, Galapagonensis. I always get a bit tongue-tied here. Now, um, so this was mildly annoying um, because we thought we were getting one thing and we got something totally different. Luckily, it is another giant centipede, so that's not such a bad bad thing. And fortunately, we have got plans to uh, try and breed both these species in the room over the next couple of years. And, um, and this is because these guys are just not bred in this country whatsoever. I don't actually know of any that have ever been bred. Um, and I think even in Europe, I think it's been more of a case of uh, females coming in gravid and then they've managed to produce. I think there's very, very limited breeding goes on with these guys. And, um, and it's something that we should be sort of like trying to address ourselves. We should be trying to breed these things for ourselves. Rather than uh, keep importing wild caught stuff, if we can produce our own, then it's got to be better in the long run for everything, for the hobby, for the centipedes, for all of us. So what we're going to do today, this one here, as you can see, she's in here now. She's in this 30 by 30 by 30 cube. Now, generally speaking, our centipedes are reasonably inactive. They don't do an enormous amount. But this girl has proved to be rather adventurous, and uh, especially in the evenings and in the mornings, she is very, very active. She's all over the place, and she's continuously hunting and searching things out and all the rest of it. So she's a very, very active centipede. Now, um, I say she, we haven't sexed it yet, so uh, we need to do that as well. But um, yes, because, because of her activity level, I've decided that we're going to move her out of this cube. This would have been perfectly fine as it is, as a maintenance type enclosure. This would have been fine. But because she is so active, I've decided we're going to move her over into one of our custom enclosures. Now, I can hear you all crying out back there. You know, oh my God, he's going to put it in that thing with sliding front glass doors. With just a mesh lid, you know. Don't panic, guys. This is going to be fine. Centipedes, although they are fast and they are a bit scary looking, and yes, you don't really want to get a nip off one, but handled with a little bit of respect and with the same rule of thumb that we use for all of our spiders, there is no reason why these guys should give us any more grief than anything else that we keep. So with that in mind, we are going to set this up as a bit of a, a woodland type affair, as you can see here. These guys come from South America, so um, they do like it hot and they do like it humid, but it's very, very important that we get our humidity level correct. We want a humid environment, we want a dry environment as well. They need to be out to have somewhere dry to go to. And this is because they suffer terribly with mycosis. So we have to ensure that they're not sat in wet, um, in, in a wet environment, you know, constantly um, saturated environment. So we're looking for some dryness in our substrate. Very, very important. So what we're going to do, we're going to make a start. Um, you'll see these discs. I know some of you sharp-eyed ones out there, you'll be like, what's he done there? What, you know, and I get it in the comments. These discs in the back here is because I had holes drilled when I designed these tanks and had them made. Um, I, I had holes drilled in the back for electrics, so that if I ever wanted to put um, a water pump or anything like that inside here, I can hide all of my leads underneath the substrate. I don't need that in this particular setup, so all I've done is I've just cut a piece of plastic and I have hot glued it over the hole. The hole's not big enough for our centipede to leave the enclosure, but it is big enough for crickets and things to get out of, so we're going to cover them up. We don't want lots of little bits and pieces running around. So then, let's crack on. We're gonna, because we're looking at getting that humidity level, we're gonna add some 
clay balls in the bottom. And this is purely to give us some control. This is literally, we're going to put this in here because this is going to give us control over the environment that we create. And it will in fact end up being in a, a bioactive setup anyway because of our plants and everything else. We're going to have isopods and things coming in with the natural materials that we're using. So this is all good. We've got our membrane here. Now remember, this is just normal weed suppressant that you get from the garden center. You can get it off of Amazon. So literally just put that in there like that. All this does is stop the, stop the soil from going down into our clay balls so that we can maintain a moisture level in here without it saturating into our soil. So we're gonna add some normal potting compost now. Gonna whop a bit of this in. Once you get that initial bit in, that just seals the the membrane down. We're looking for we just want a light covering of this at the moment in there like so that's in there now then we've got ourselves a real fancy piece of wood to go in here because we know we all love a good bit of wood now then we've got this this is a natural piece that we found it was much much bigger when I actually initially picked it up but we've cut it to size and that is going to go in there like so now we can we can right yeah, that's good so we're going we've cut that to size so that fits in there like so and what we're hoping is when our centipede settles down she's going to lay out on here look absolutely stunning so we're going to Add some more soil now. And this is because we want to add some plants too. Put that in there. Some down in here. This is always the hard bit. maybe we can push that back there we go do us for now so what we're doing is we're literally just filling this in and what we're going to do we're going to place our plants in here now we've got some normal ivies here these are just normal ivy out of your garden center and cheap as chips but they're really really good for any of your displays they all fit in really really well so what we're going to do is we're going to literally 
I'm going to place these in here. Now the reason we chose the ivy is because it is really quite robust and um, our centipede can be a little bit heavy footed. So what we want So what we want, we want plants that are going to be able to withstand a little bit of abuse because I'm, like I say, our centipedes are quite, they're quite strong. Now we haven't noticed that um, our one here does any particular digging or anything. She's pretty good like that, but she, she will definitely turf all of this up. We'll steal a bit from the front, but we can add that back. There we go. So what we're looking for, we want this to sort of like hang over. Give us a nice look. That's looking nice, isn't it? Look at that. Even if I do say so myself. I love this part of the actual, um, this part of the build is really, really exciting. I think there's, um, there is literally so much you can do, so much you can do with your enclosures. The only thing that limits you is your imagination. What we're going to do now is we're going to put that one in there. Give another little bit of a look there, won't it? There we go. Now we're starting to take a bit of shape. So now we're going to, um, we're actually, what we're going to do now is we are going to add some of our beastie mix on the top. Now this will give it texture. And it'll also give it a little bit more of that, that woodland feel, that foresty look about it. Give us some more depth as well, you see. Now this is um, collected straight from the field, straight out of the woods. It's absolutely lovely stuff. Really nice. Put a little bit of that in there like that. There we go. Chances are she'll get under here. You see that gives it somewhere nice and dark to disappear in. Look at that. That's looking nice now. So that's enough of that. Get rid of me bits of rubbish. Right then. Uh, do we want any more? Come on. Camera's lady's saying no. Right. I think what we're going to do is we we can put this in here. Now this is um again. This is just to give a little bit more. For, them to, for it to hide, but we want it to hide where it's going to not necessarily disappear entirely. And we've got some, some other bits here. These are just rotten branches that we've picked up off the woodland floor, but they've got a little bit of moss on them, so it just gives us another nice little, another aspect if you like. We're going to want a water dish. I wonder if she'll allow me to steal her water dish. See if we can get in here without waking her up. As long as we don't touch her, she should be good. There you go. See? Weren't too terrifying, was it? All right, we're going to put a water dish over here. That's cool. 
So what we're doing, we're literally, we're just, we're just trying to replicate a, um, a forest look. Stick a bit of that up there. And we've got all different sizes here. So you can see here, you can see how we're getting the general feel of this now. And this is what we're looking for. We, we're just, we're just looking to literally just create a little bit of, you see our isopods on here? And if you can see that, little tiny wood last there. You don't know how lucky he is, does he? Right, so we'll put that in there as well. Sit that down there. I think that looks quite reasonable. What do you think, camera lady? I love it. You love it. All right. Can you move the mask out of the way? Because you know it's a good look. All right, hold on. So we've literally, it hasn't taken long to actually do this. We've quickly put it all together. What we will do is we will take a little bit of this moss, a little bit of that. That can go up in here. What that'll do is that literally just covers up that little piece of dirt up there, carries on that look now. You see? That's looking nice. You might find that she just tears this stuff up, moves it all about. But it will just add. I think that looks lovely. Right, that is what we're going to settle with. That's good. Right. What do we think? Oh, another wood lice. Look on, there's loads of them. There's all sorts of little bugs and bits and pieces in here. We'll throw a lot in. Oh, it's a bit heavier now than what it was. How's that? So as you can see there, what we've done is we, we've tried to replicate the forest floor. And um, all being well, now she will enjoy mooching around, getting around. She can get underneath this piece of log here and disappear entirely if needs be. And, uh, and she's also got this bit here that she can get under as well. So she can hide away. But like I say, she's, I mean, she's out now. She's actually quite a, quite a showy, showy centipede. So, um, I think what we'll do now is we'll, um, we'll have a go at catching her. This is always the fun part, but we have no need to panic. What we done here, we seen there. I can uh, move these bits out of the way so I've got a bit of room. What we're going to do is we're going to swish this round here again because I need a little bit of room. We'll leave this stuff here because this might come in handy should we get a runner. We'll put that there. We've got our catch box here. We're going to use a bra blast box to try and get her in. Um, right. What we're going to do now is we're going to Put the lid on our enclosure. Now with this enclosure, the lid and everything all locks in. So when we put the front glass in, that locks it all in as well. So there is no way this can be opened up by our centipede. Just gonna clean that runner out of there. We'll put our glass in. It's always best to do these bits now because once she's in, oh, 
won't be able to. Right. Can't see. Well, that one's in there. I know what I've done. I know what I've done. It's my fault. I put a fly strip on my glass door. And I didn't cut the ends off. And this is why my glass won't fit. It should fit now. I believe. That's it. We're there. Right. There you go. We are all ready and prepared. Now the fun part. So what we're going to do, we are going to remove as much of this as we can without waking her up. We don't want her awake just yet. We'll take our lid off ready in case we need to go. Now, with these guys, they are, they are very, very quick. And we do have to treat them with a little bit of respect. But by the same token, these guys, how they react, they react by touch. So if you touch it, no matter where you touch it, it will fly around in a defensive way to face whatever it was that it felt touch it. So bearing that in mind, the idea is don't touch it unless it's absolutely necessary. And in which case, if you're gonna do that, then you try and touch it to turn it the way that you want it to turn. Not to just go off in a crazy, crazy fashion and do its own thing. So what we're gonna do, we are gonna slide the lid back now. And we're gonna take out as much of this as we can. You do need to be very, very careful of your fingers. Again, nice and gently. Don't want to wake her up just yet. There we go. So now we've got almost a clear area in which to deal with her. The only thing that we got in the way now is this piece of moss. Now, if we try and move this piece of moss to make life easier, she will wake up. And then once she's out and about, it's going to get a whole lot different. So, I think, uh, we may, we may be able to go over the top of it, or we may just have to scoop the whole thing up. This is going to be very interesting. Um, how am I going to do this? Right. I'm going to put that there. We're going to drop this down inside the table so I'm not leaping up quite so high. There we go. We still see that. No, she hasn't moved yet. Do you think she's waiting in the ambush? She's thinking, we'll just, we'll just pretend we're asleep. Right, okay. So as you can see here now, this tub... It's plenty big enough for her. The only thing being, like I said before, when she moves, she will move really, really quickly. So we're gonna have to um, just really suck it and see. Here we go. Yep. 
There we go. And she's in that bit. Now these are incredibly strong. So you need to make sure, now you can see there, she's holding on to the outside of the box. We've not got any pressure on her toes at all there. They are literally just held there. They're not doing anything at all. And you can see she's relatively, taking it relatively easy. She's pretty good. So what we're gonna do now is we are gonna move her over. Now, actually one thing that's worth can you see clearly her antenna? Is it possible to see them? Can you see those through the plastic? Yeah? Now look at look at the, what her antenna are doing. They are now laid out, which is her, she's now relaxing. Before, they were curled up, and they curl back on themselves, and you can see them literally like, like, like springs. And, um, when they curl back like that, this is her. She's 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 poised for action. She's she's, she's actually cleaning that one there now. But you can see how like how they curl them up. So now some of this cleaning will actually be a little bit of a nervous thing. So many animals when they're nervous they clean, and this just sort of like settles their nerves a little bit. You see, she's she's fairly placid at the moment. She's being pretty good. Now, you see how her body reacted then? That's because I put a little bit of pressure on the lid here. She would have felt that on her toes. You see there? See how she pushes herself up against? We've got to be careful now because we don't want her to come out. Now, you see the antenna now, how they react. So you can often tell with your centipede what kind of mood it's going to be in. By the way, you see how they're curled up now? This is a good indication that we have an upset centipede. She's not particularly happy. So what we're going to do now, we are going to move her over to a lovely new palatial home. We're going to leave her in the box there. We're going to get this one out of the way. And the reason we clear everything out of the way is because we like to keep a nice tidy area so that should we get a, a bolt or an escape we can deal with it nice and easily so what we're going to do we're going to open this up we're going to open our box and we're going to hopefully get her to go in that direction but generally speaking centipedes come back the way they they sort of you don't want them to go so i'm literally going to put that in there like that Oh, we didn't want that. There we go. See how she's hanging onto the box rather than letting go. It's not doing you any harm, is it? Lose interest with the box, please. Now we can close our door. Now you can see there, she's just checking everything out. I'll move this round. Is that good? No reflections? So as you saw there, it doesn't necessarily have to be a nightmare to deal with. But doesn't she look beautiful in there? Now you can see now she's checking absolutely everything out. And she's biting down on the silicon in the corner there. And this is almost like a um, like a frustrated behaviour. She's literally checking everything. You can see how her antenna now, how they're constantly working away. They're very erratic and 
she's feeling, she's looking around now. Everything she finds in there now is alien to her, so she's going to be interested in all of it. Now, I think you'll agree that's a much, much better enclosure. This is going to make a really nice exhibit type enclosure, so we should hopefully see, see a lot more of her in a more natural environment. And she will look absolutely stunning in there. Once she settles down and she, she actually starts to move around in a nice sedate way, it'll be cool. And also as well, when we feed, we can throw our dubia roaches in here. We, we tend to feed the males to these guys because the males are always running around. So, you know, they're active, which is what we want. And in that way, these guys will find them. And she will actively hunt the, the dubias around. So it's going to be really, really cool. Here she comes. She's coming back up again. And she's having a nibble on everything. Which is, that's really, really interesting how they literally bite everything. It makes you wonder whether she can, um, she can sense anything on there. Maybe there was a bit of local wildlife on there or something. You never know. She's checking it out. So one of the things that we um, we often hear about with our centipedes is the fear factor of um, of how bad they can be and how dangerous they can be. These guys do need to be be treated well and gently. And as we've shown there, we didn't really see any aggression from her. She was reasonably good. Um, she didn't want to let go of that tub. It's quite interesting how they change their attention from one thing to another. Most things don't normally get associated with the tub, but um, she was quite keen on it. She's really checking out that piece of wood. That is fascinating. Very interesting. So as we've shown there, as long as you're careful and you plan correctly, you can deal with these really, really easily. And when it comes down to um, our maintenance of this, it will be no trouble to just slide our glass back. We can get to our water bowl without disturbing anything. And we can feed really, really easily. We literally just open it up, throw a couple of roaches in, job done. Now this is gonna be on the bottom shelf. So she sits at around about 78 degrees or so, somewhere around there, sometimes 80 when it gets really warm in here. And um, this will be absolutely fine for her. With the mesh top, this is in fact a um, stainless steel food grade mesh that we use on here. And this is mainly there to um, stop any flies and things. So this is a fly proof enclosure. So we, we won't get any little bits of gnats and things like that getting inside there as well. And this is something we're turning over to all of our tanks. It's going to be a much, much better, better system, and we can maintain that environment much better. I don't know what was on that piece of wood, but she is still really going for it. You've got you know, some good close-ups of her doing her thing there. Something's obviously caught her attention. That's incredible. She doesn't eat wood bars, does she? She, she might do if she um, yeah if she if she can find a wood light she will catch it she will she will get them generally speaking we find with the wood lice for all of our adult stuff it's um, they're too small so they don't really bother with them you know most of that stuff will will carry on living the uh, springtails and everything in there they won't be affected by her at all if anything she can actually make it better for them because where she'll be in and out of the substrate and moving it around she'll be completely refreshing it all the time. So they actually work in favour for things like um, springtails and stuff. Fancy going and lifting the stick out of the way so you can have a good look. Not really, no. <laughs> Not really. If I try and move that stick, I guarantee, although curiosity is getting the better of me, yeah. we're, um, we'll have a little look. I don't know. We might just be able to do it. She could be so engrossed. I think she is. Ooh, as long as I don't touch her bum with that. There we go. What has she found? I 
Very, very interesting. Again, a real close-up of that. Very, very interesting. Hmm. I've not seen this before. Right then. Well, I hope you've uh, you enjoyed that rehouse, and um, I'm sure she's going to enjoy it. Oh, here we go. We were just about to finish up, and there she is. She's off again. Here we go. Here she comes. Now this is what we were hoping for with this build, that she will actually be moving around and she'll do her own thing. And uh, we'll get to see her exploring this new environment. How can you not love these guys? Aren't they just fascinating? Mm -hmm. Absolutely fascinating. And hopefully we can, um, as time goes by, we can get some footage of her actually uh, catching roaches and things and get some feeding footage. Well, as you can see, we, uh, we took the opportunity to offer her a, a roach, a male dubia, and she took it straight off the tongs. And uh, we don't normally tong feed our centipedes. Normally the, um, we can drop the stuff in there, they're on them pretty quick. But we thought as she was out on the log, we'd try and capture some footage of her actually feeding properly. Because this is something we don't tend to see, because as you can see there, she buries her head down. She's got hold of the roach, you can see the roach underneath her. And you can see the first sort of five, five pairs of legs are actually holding the roach. And then you can see her mandibles. And then the small yellow one in front, these are what are actually feeding the, the, the food, the item. Once she chews it up, it's being fed up into her mouth. And you can see them working away quite quickly. You notice how she holds her antennas up out of the way? This is so they don't get damaged, especially if they hold on to something that's a bit lively, a large prey item. We always keep their antennas clearly out of the way. Very, very important. And you can see now she's starting to chow down onto that. And um, it's remarkable, actually. I mean, that, that male roach, he was a good size. He was an adult male roach. And she's literally chewing away on the head already. And you can see there that the... Uh, you can see the legs of the roach. There's no movement there. So I would imagine that he's, he's in actual fact dead. And I think the uh, centipedes finish theirs off much quicker than spiders do. As we can see now, we're just going to have a quick close-up look. You can see the armoured segments of the body there. See the black tips to the, uh, the toes? This is the actual claws of the, of the feet. Incredible looking animals. And you can see the lung there in the section there. Every other section on the centipede has a lung. And uh, you can just see it there at the top. And you can see she's almost finished this roach now. And um, one of the interesting things was from start to finish her eating that roach took possibly five minutes and it was gone. You can see there, there's nothing left. And uh, on inspection afterwards, there was not a single piece of that roach left. No debris, there was no wings, no um, body casings, no legs. She had devoured the whole lot. Everything had gone. Whereas our spiders create a bolus and then throw that out, centipede at absolutely everything. And now she's off to have a look around and see what else is on offer.
truly remarkable creatures. Nothing to be feared. Beautiful. There you go, there's a tiny little spider there, just ran out. Yeah. And she's going to have a little dig around now. She's going to get in there and find out what's what. We could sit and watch this all day long. Right then. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed that. And um, we will keep you informed and we'll see how this enclosure goes. See whether she actually destroys it or whether it stays intact. Um, Hopefully, fingers crossed, it will stay intact. And then, uh, all being well, oh, here she goes. Look at that. Now, doesn't that just look absolute, absolutely fantastic? Very, very exciting. Very exciting. Chuffed to bits. Mm -hmm. Right then. We are going to try and say goodbye one more time. <laughs> right. I hope you enjoyed that. And don't forget, be calm. Be gentle and love your spider and your centipedes. They're really cool. I'll see you soon, guys. <laughs>